Okay, so this is a bit of a different video. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how I would approach modeling some sort of dinosaur head. So we're going to work on the Dryptosaurus. Maybe you have questions about how to approach things such as the um, ridges of the horns or, you know, just some certain complexities about a dinosaur skull that you may, you know, have questions about. What I would do is um, either use, I use pure ref sometimes to um, draw on things, or you can open your image editor and then just annotate. So what we're going to start with is just outlining the skull. And we're going to keep this relatively low poly. So these little dots are representing vertices. So we're just going to follow the skull all the way around like this. So we're going to have edges that flow through. And we'll go ahead and end it somewhere about here. And then just to keep things nice and even, we'll go ahead and maybe pull this one about here. Now, it's important to have multiple references. So because this is a dinosaur, thankfully they have you know, skulls that have been found, hopefully. So you can see exactly where these ridges or bone kind of extrusions are. If you're looking at something such as a side perspective, it might be a little deceiving. You might think like, oh, I need to model this right in the center. But if you actually look at the skull reference, there's two you know, extrusions of the skulls on either side. So there's actually, it's quite flat in the center. We do have these sort of other bumps um, sort of near the nasal area that uh, very well could be in the center. But these two here are definitely on the outside. So you wouldn't want to model following this side perspective, like doing this. No, you actually want to extrude straight through and then you can um, model that in on the side. So I'll show you what I mean by actually doing this. So I have the image here and it's not to scale or anything like that. I just sort of threw it in. So let's go ahead and kind of do my example. So I'm just going to add in a single vert and turn on vertex. So we're going to start right about here and extrude just following the curvature of the skull. I'm keeping this very low poly. Low poly meaning not having as many um, polygons essentially, but um, the less I have to worry about, the easier it makes my life if I need to adjust things. The important thing is just getting the form and the edge flow the way you want it. So let me keep working here. So I'll just sort of keep extruding till about something like that. So now that we have this built, and I'm actually going to drop this vertex down because it's going to shape the um, mouth opening area. Now that we have this, we need to fill it because it's just looking like this. This is not going to work, right? So what I'll do is with this vertex, I'll just go ahead and extrude right down the center. I'll move this one away, give it some space, and we need to sort of start matching things up. So I can tell that I need a, a vertice, a vertex in the center. Now we can start filling these with quads and keep going till we have that. Now, uh, we're also going to need to extrude um, so it's not just a flat plane, but we'll drop one more vertex. And now we have uh, this shape going. I would also throw another edge in so that way you're not just working. If we just had this edge, supporting the opening of our mouth, 
we're working with a pole and a pole can give you very pinchy results, especially if you plan on subdividing. Um, it just makes the area kind of more complicated to work with. So I would throw in another edge. How do I know this? Honestly, just from um, trial and error. So now we have a nice quad here, a little separation from the top and bottom. And another tip is having equal amounts of edges on both the top and the bottom. I know it's not always going to be possible, but with my models, I want the mouth to close. And sometimes if you're trying to get the mouth to close, and you're trying to push and pull vertices around, things may not line up correctly and it can just look off. I can explain that more in a later video if you are if you have questions about that. But let's just keep continuing. So we're going to extrude. Um, also, it's always a good idea to turn on face orientation just to be sure that your faces are literally faced correctly. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going, keeping this very simple. Again, you can see I'm not lining up correctly with everything, but I'm just getting the general form in. All the way to there. You could see the chin's overhanging, the top of the nostril's not quite there. However, we have the starting form of the skull. All right, so it's very flat as we've already discussed. So let's go ahead and extrude this on the X. And we're going to throw in a mirror and enable clipping. So now we don't have to worry about modeling the other side. It's already done for us. Okay, so this might be a point where you may want to say, scale up this side on the X because we also have to add in the neck and you wouldn't want to extrude and model the neck out like this. It actually is a little bit further in. What I mean by in, is that it sits more on the center of this face. So what we might need to do is add in an edge loop, right? So let's add an edge loop in, let's pull it somewhere about here, grabbing these faces. And we also have like this extra skin underneath. So we may wanna go till about here you could see where the extra skin sort of ends. Again, this is all just sort of eyeballing. And then we can just simply extrude. And now we'll need to scale up and play around with the placement of everything. Now, it's important to sort of keep your edges flowing in the same direction, if possible. Now I may need to move this edge a little bit forward and pull it up. And you could see we'll still need some more edges to run through here. But the important thing is, is by adding in those verts, we actually are maintaining the form of the skull. So here are the verts that we added in. So if we need to add more verts in, they're snapping to the shape of the skull, which is really important. So we'll go ahead and add some more in here. Okay, so this is what we're kind of working with. It's still really low poly, obviously. Um, let's go ahead and shape it at the front. So I'm gonna turn on proportional editing and just GX and just pull it in on the X a little bit. You don't wanna go too far, otherwise um, it'll just clip with the mirror uh, clipping enabled. All right, so we still haven't added in our ridges 
And that's because we need to add in more topology in order to maintain that form. So let's go ahead and kind of start working our way to that point. So I'm just shuffling things around. We have some edges here that kind of need to get pulled around. Play around with the form. And we can keep, you know, extruding this. Right, so I can actually start turning this maybe into a little bit of a circle. It might get crazy. And in fact, I'm going to delete these faces because uh, we could run into some issues there. And we actually have some inside faces that need to get deleted out. And that was from extruding from the center. And this can cause shading issues. So what I'll do is just select some faces, go through here, take a look. Got some guys there that need to go. Okay, and that's the inside of the mouth, so we don't need to delete any of that. Okay, so what we could do is loop tool circle. Uh, anytime you do this, it will snap away from the mirror. I find that very annoying, but we'll just go ahead and push and pull things. But you can see that we are forming the uh, neck now at this point. Obviously, it's still very jaggedy. But the general form is getting there. And a tool I like to use a lot is when you're starting to shape things. So I like to use the smooth tool and that will soften the faces out and sort of space them a little bit better. You can turn off the Z axis. So if, say I like the height of it, but I just want to smooth out the X and Y, you could do that. And keeping things sort of straight up and down, like nice and flat like this, is the best way to space things out. So keeping the faces consistent, nice clean spacing, just like that. Obviously we have our head shape. That's why these edges are curved in the way they are. So I don't want to disturb these edges that we marked. And that's why I marked them. So if it's easier for you to visualize, you know, what edges you don't want to move and things like that, go ahead and select your edges. I'll just select some random ones, do a control E, and then you can mark freestyle edge. And um, that will help you um, in the long run. So you don't accidentally move important um, edges that retain form. So I can soften this, I can pull this down. You know, we're, we're getting to that point where you can really start shaping, you know, the, the back of the neck and stuff, but we're not going to work on that. Let's keep going with the face. So again, let's keep things nice and even. So, and keep them relatively in the same spot, uh, the edges. Again, this is for opening and closing. And I'll show you uh, actually really quick. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding in this hook modifier that will allow me to open and close the mouth based on these selection of faces that I'm making. And I'm going to add them to a vertex group. I'll just call this, I usually just call this empty like mouth control. Okay, so now if I rotate this, obviously I haven't finished selecting everything. Okay, the pivot point is not where it should be. So let me go ahead and fix this up a little bit. When you're adding in any sort of mouth control, you want to consider where the pivot point of the mouth actually is. So this could be a little bit exaggerated. Um, but this is just to, again, show you an example. So I'm trying to close the mouth and I can see that I have, 
you know, some ov overhang. The mouth isn't quite closing correctly. I need everything to line up nicely. So what I would do is sort of move these verts around until you get to the point where, hey, the mouth is actually closing the way it, it's supposed to. But if I were to have extra edges in here and they're pulling away, things just aren't gonna match up, right? And the example gets more complex with the more uh, verts and stuff you have, but hopefully that gives you kind of an idea as to why to have the same amount of verts. If not, I apologize. Um, let, let's keep working here. So we have some more, um, so we let's start kind of shaping in this horn area a little bit. So I can see we're gonna need maybe one here. All right, we're going to leave this off at a bit of a cliffhanger. If you wish to see part two right away, you can have instant access through my website where I will also be uploading the blend file. So that way you can kind of go in and investigate things on your own if you are still interested in learning about the topology of the head. Um, otherwise, part two will be out in a little bit. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.